Hey everybody, this is Doug Keeling, and I wanted to get us in the Christmas spirit with another Christmas lights tutorial. Um, this one is going to be different than the last one. That one actually used sort of a string of Christmas lights. In this case, we're going to use the rope lights that uh, we've seen a lot more um, recently here over the past few years. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I have a blank document here that's 300 dpi. Um, eight and a half by eleven and this is turned on its side landscape and then I have a texture that I've put in for the background um, you can download this if you visit my website there's a link to that and you can check out the credits for that and then uh, there's also a font that we're using called Learning Curve Pro and I'll have a link to that on my site as well that you can uh, follow to, to download that font for free as well so I've gone ahead in here and I've just typed out the word joy and uh, that's the word we're going to use. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and, and straightforward, so that's what we're going to use, but this would work with any kind of text you want. And I'm just going to uh, increase the font size here, probably up to oh, maybe almost 300 point. And uh, that looks good. I'll go ahead and center that now. I'm going to just select the text layer and the background layer and I'm going to press the V key to get to my move tool then I'm going to use the alignment tools up here and I'm just going to center this horizontally and center it vertically so our joy layer is in there we've got our background and we are good to go so let's get started here um, the first thing that we're going to do is basically uh, fill this joy layer with the kind of the average of the color of this background here and um, you'll kind of see why in the end why we need this this layer but um, what I'm going to do is press the I key and switch to the eyedropper tool and I'm going to change the sample size to something fairly big so we'll just go 100 by 100 average and we'll see what kind of a brown color that gives us so we've got that, and now we're going to, now we've got that color, we're going to fill that uh, joy text layer with that color by just pressing Alt or Option, um, Option Delete, Alt Backspace. And there we go, we have the brown, I'm just going to zoom in here. And uh, basically at this point, we're just going to leave that layer B and do its thing, and we're going to duplicate that by pressing Command J. And that creates our duplicate. And now we're going to turn the fill of that down to zero. And we're just going to go crazy adding a bunch of layer styles. So first thing we're going to do is add an inner bevel, um, a bevel and emboss. So we want to make sure that the style is, is inner bevel. And this is probably going to pick up all the styles because I was um, doing this beforehand. Um, so we may or may not have to change some of these, but you want your style to be inner bevel, bevel technique to be smooth, your depth to be 130%, your size to be 20 pixels, your soften set to zero, um, the angle can be at 90 degrees, 30% uh, or 30 degrees altitude, you want your gloss contour to be um, this one right here, which is, if it hovers over it, there we go, Gaussian. Um, and then you want your highlight and overlay mode, your, your, sorry, your highlight and your shadow modes to be overlay. Make sure your color is white for both of those and your opacity is 90% on the shadow mode. And you can see kind of what that does. It gives us the outline, um, starts to look like uh, something that's a little bit rounded. So that's good. We're going to move on then to the contour setting that goes along with that. And in the contour settings, um, it is already set up for us, but we're going to use this sort of rounded, um, and again, sorry, I don't know the names of all of these. You hover over them, the half round, that's it. Uh, we want that to be anti-aliased, and we want the range to be 40%. Then from there, we're going to add an inner shadow. Go down there. You want your blend mode to be overlay. You want your opacity to be 40%. Um, the angle is 90, de 90 degrees, your distance is 7 pixels, your size is 4 pixels, um, the contour is just the standard default setting, and the noise is down to zero. So that's what we've got there. You're also going to add another inner shadow. Now I've got several inner shadows showing up here right now, 
Actually, I can just remove all these. If you uh, click Delete Hidden Effects, it'll basically get rid of everything except the ones that you currently add, and that can be helpful. So I'm going to add another inner shadow. So down below this one, we are going to have our blend mode to overlay as it was. We're going to change the opacity to 70%. Um, the 90 degree angle is fine. The distance is going to go down to zero. Your choke is going to go up to 40%. Your size is going to go to 10 pixels. And uh, that's all we've got for that one. You can start to see that we're getting a little bit more of a plasticky um, look. And that's, that's what we want to go for. So after we've added our inner shadow, now we're going to add an inner glow. So let's do that. Inner glow. We want the blend mode for this to be overlay. The opacity to be 100%. The noise to be zero. Color is white. Um, for the source, we want that to come from the center, not the edge. So make sure you have center selected. We want the choke to be zero. Your size to be 30 pixels and the contour settings um, remain unchanged from the default. Then after that, we're going to add another effect. And luckily for you guys, you can access this PSD from my website and download that. Um, so you can take it apart and scrutinize all these things, but I will just walk through these in case you're following along directly with the video. The next thing we're gonna add is a satin effect. And for that, we have, again, the blend mode to overlay. A lot of these uh, you know, sound pretty familiar here. Opacity at 50%, the angle at 90 degrees. Distance at 17 pixels. Size at 24 pixels. And then for your contour, you want to use this one right here, which is, see if it'll show me here, the ring double. So we've got that. And we're getting close to the end. We're going to now add an outer glow. Let's go down and add outer glow. And for this one, again, overlay, opacity 100%, noise at zero. Technique is fine at softer, spread is zero, size is 20 pixels. And the contour is that half round contour that we used before. And then finally, I believe this is the last one, we're going to just add a drop shadow and we're going to just uh, use the following settings here. We're going to have an opacity of 80 percent. Uh, the angle is 90. Your distance is going to be 10 pixels. Spread can be zero. Your size is going to be 30 pixels. And I think that's it. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, all the rest of the default settings should be pretty much good to go. So you can click OK and we can be done. Um, now what I'm going to do here real quickly is turn off this original text layer, the joy text layer that's underneath. And if you do that, you'll see that these overlaid effects, all these effects that have that overlay blend mode, they really, um, you can see through them, which is great, but we don't really want to see through them to the point that we're seeing all of these real deep uh, crevices here from the, the space between the boards. So that's why we have this joy layer, the original layer that's sort of got the, the average of that uh, background color. And what we're going to do now, we still want some of those cracks to show through, so we're going to take that down to about 70% on the fill. And that way, from the overlay side of things, you can still see that there's a little bit of a, a, a uh, I don't know what you'd call it there, a crease or a... Um, uh, a subtracted area there where where the boards you know between the boards that's basically what we want to accomplish okay there. so now we actually want to create our rope lights and we want those lights to go inside so how are we gonna do that well there are a couple different ways that you could do this but um, basically what I'm going to do is draw a shape with the pen tool so switch to that by hitting P on your keyboard and basically all you're gonna do is sort of um, by hand you're going to trace this shape from the inside so you want your line your path to be pretty much centered in here and there's a reason that we're doing it with the with the shape mode rather than like the path mode but we'll get to that um, down the road um, for the uh, stroke it may actually help you to to see this so let's just change the stroke color to like um, white and um, three pixel or three point that's probably going to be fairly big but 
we'll just take it down to one point and take our fill down to nothing. We don't need that. And let's just go ahead and start tracing this and it'll create a shape layer for us. And right there, I started to go off already. So I'm gonna just adjust this as I go along. And we're creating a kind of white stroke right in the middle of this line. Okay, once you have everything traced out pretty much the way you want it, you can just um, go ahead and press enter and that'll uh, just kind of let you see what you're looking at. And if you want to, you can turn off this joy layer above it. So that now that you just have the, the background joy text and your, your overlay. Um, so now we're just going to change a few options here with our stroke. So what we basically have is just a line. We've used a shape. We have the shape layer, but it has no fill. So now we can go ahead and, uh, and change the stroke settings. So go ahead and click on that. And um, yeah, we've got our color at, at uh, white, and that's fine. Let's bump up our size. Let's try two point and see what that looks like. That's not bad. We may even be able to go up to three point, but we need to change some of the other settings. So let's go to um, this little drop down here with the stroke options, and we're going to go to the alignment, we're going to make that uh, centered so that it sort of is a little, little more centered. And then we're going to do sort of a custom preset here. We're not going to, we're not going to use a preset. We're going to make a custom stroke. Um, so we're just going to click more options. And we're going to make a dashed line. And we're going to make this, let's see, let's do 0.75 points and we're gonna have a gap of two and our caps we will use this uh, butt cap here and the miter that doesn't really matter too much eh, we do have a couple issues here over on the Y um, let's change that yeah that looks pretty good and we'll change that to round on that one and that should take care of that for us and then you can basically just click OK and you may have to hit enter again then to get rid of that little stroke option there. All right, now let's turn back on our joy copy layer that has our layer styles. And all of a sudden, we've got something that's a lot closer to looking like a rope light. And at this point, you want to review kind of what you've got going on here and make sure that it's looking the way you want it to look. If you have some lights here that aren't centered, um, like this area here, you can go in and, and edit that by just switching to your to your um, pen tool and your direct selection tool and path selection tool, whatever, to uh, just readjust these to make sure that they follow kind of the center of your of your lines a little better. Um, it won't matter a great deal um, with what we're going to do in just a second, but um, you do want them to be you know fairly fairly centered along there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Going to zoom back out and center that a little bit. And now we're going to, th this is why it's kind of important to get, make sure you've got everything straightened out and centered the way you want it at this point, because now we're going to convert this to a smart object so that we can apply some blurs and, and things to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I have a, a shortcut set up on my computer to do this, um, but if you go to layer, smart objects, and convert to smart object, that will do that for you and we could just call this lights. Now go up to the filter menu, go to Gaussian blur, and let's just blur this by maybe two pixels. Yeah, two looks good because we want it to still be kind of squared. I don't know if you ever actually looked at these rope lights, but they are kind of squared off in nature. And what you'll notice is that now since we have our lights behind this joy overlay copy you get some interesting things that happen where all of these overlaid um, effects kind of make the the lights themselves look a little streaky and and that's what they look like you know in the actual rope lights um, so just like that we're we're doing pretty good one final thing then that you can do to make this look a little bit more like the rope 
is actually looping over itself is to zoom in we're gonna create a new layer and we'll just call this um, we'll call it shadows I guess or maybe overlaps maybe that's better okay and we're going to just select the outline of our joy text so let's just do that by pressing command and clicking on the T of the of the joy text layer you can see that it outlines it there and then I'm gonna create a group I think that's what I'll do I'll create a group here with this overlaps layer inside it so just press command G and it'll put it into a group keeps that all selected and now we can um, now we can paint in some shadows here and and not have to worry about painting outside the lines here when we click this little layer mask button now, uh, if you look at that, same thing, it's our joy text. And in this case, everything that's in the white is going to be visible. Everything that's in the black is going to be hidden. So, I'm going to use the pen tool again, just so I can be more accurate. And I'll show you what we're going to do here. It's easier probably just to see it. We don't want to draw a shape at this point, so I'm going to switch to path mode instead. And I'm just going to create a number of selections here and then yeah that looks good I'm gonna paint in some black so I've got my my pen tool I've got my shape created with that and maybe I'll adjust that just a little bit to follow this line a little better that looks pretty good and now if you press command or control enter then that converts that pen um, that pen shape to a selection so make sure you're on your overlaps uh, layer and we've got this brown color and that's probably fine for what we need to do now we're gonna grab the brush tool by hitting B we're gonna just right click and make sure you have a soft brush selected and you can have the hardness to zero size doesn't matter too much and we're just gonna physically like paint in I'm gonna undo that physically paint in a shadow there and once you're done, press Command D to deselect that. And now, just repeat this over and over again. We've got our pen tool. We've got the area that we want to create a shadow in to make it look like this area is actually overlapping the the other areas. Now we're gonna we've got that selected. We're gonna paint right inside that. And if you zoom out. You'll see right now it doesn't look very good, but we're just going to take the opacity of that way down to 50% is okay. Um, and you can just experiment. Changing the blend mode like to multiply, that helps. That looks a little better there. Then just repeat your process. I want this part of the O to, to look like it's above this uh, section below it here. So let's just go ahead and create an area there that we can mask off. And we're going to paint that. Okay, now that looks pretty good. So uh, we're kind of on our way at this point. We have uh, the actual rope lights themselves um, pretty well squared away. There's a few things that we're going to do um, to carry this on a little bit further and to actually set the scene. Uh, but if you want to stop at this point, you can stop there. Or you can continue on to part two where we go into a few more uh, details to just kind of spruce this up and make it kind of look a little more completed as an overall finished image. Alright, so hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please uh, hang tight for part two and be sure to like this video, consider subscribing to my channel, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.